the Prime Minister has told the Mayor of Greater Manchester that he is prepared to intervene and impose the highest level of coronavirus restrictions on the region if they can't reach an agreement. The Mayor, Andy Burnham, is seeking a bigger package of financial support for businesses that would be forced to close as a result. Tonight, he told Boris Johnson that he and local leaders were ready to meet the government at any time. Meanwhile, Lancashire today agreed to impose the highest restrictions and is now joining the Liverpool city region, seen here in red, on very high alert. The tightest level of restrictions will come into force in Lancashire tomorrow. It means no mixing between households indoors or outdoors in certain settings like private gardens. Pubs and bars will close unless they serve a substantial meal and people should avoid non-essential travel into or out of the area. But there are differences. In Lancashire, unlike Liverpool, gyms and leisure centres won't have to close, but soft play centres and car boot sales will from Monday. The Mayor of Liverpool says it's madness to have different Tier 3 rules for Lancashire and it's sowing confusion. Here's our Deputy Political Editor, Vicky Young. It's taken days of negotiations. Finally, local leaders in Lancashire and ministers in London have come up with a deal. More restrictions are coming across the county, alongside millions of pounds in financial support. But some shoppers here in Nelson want a different approach. I think they should have done it earlier, to be quite honest. Uh, but my mum's 87, you can't tell my mother to stop in, because she won't. <laughs> I think it's good, I think it needs to be made tougher. I think the way the government's been coming across, they haven't been clear on the rules anyway. There's no transparency, total, utter confusion. Boris Johnson's opted for a regional approach because many places have fewer COVID cases than hotspots in the north of England. But it's meant more talking, more wrangling over money and more delay. No one wants to have to implement these measures which damage local businesses, but these decisions were necessary because of the rate of increase, not just of infections, but also in hospitalizations and admissions to intensive care. But not every area has signed up. Greater Manchester's leaders said tonight that closing pubs wasn't the only way to protect hospitals. They want other things like shielding to be considered and tougher penalties for venues that flout COVID regulations. They're demanding extra money for businesses that do have to close. Don't you know how to make a quick decision about whether you impose those extra restrictions on places including Greater Manchester or give them more money to persuade them? Which will it be and when? It's far better to do it together because uh, we want the maximum local buy-in, the maximum local enforcement uh, and the maximum local compliance. And that means local leadership. I, I hope that, uh, that Greater Manchester will come on board. The national government uh, must uh, reserve the right to, to step in uh, and, and do what is, what is necessary. For many cities, including Nottingham, the uncertainty continues. Cases and hospitalisations are rising quickly and additional measures could be on the way. One former Prime Minister says the government has to be more generous. At the very time that we're increasing uh, the requirements on people not to do things we're act and denying people the chance of jobs, we're reducing the economic support. Now, if I was Boris Johnson, again, you've got to be one step ahead. What he should be doing is calling the Chancellor this morning, telling him that his economic re recovery package is not going to work, get him to bring a new economic recovery package, and I think you could build consent around that. Boris Johnson says the situation's worsening with every passing day. There's real tension between Westminster and some local leaders, but decisions need to be taken very soon. Vicky Young, BBC News, Westminster. Pubs and bars have just closed tonight in Lancashire and no one knows when they'll be allowed to reopen. The only ones that can continue to serve customers are those that serve substantial meals as well. Judith Moritz has been gauging reaction to the sudden changes in Lancaster. Lancashire woke up to uncertainty and rumour. Mid-morning, confirmation came. The county's soaring infection rates causing it to move up from the middle to the highest COVID alert level. It means that today you could have a lunchtime drink in this Lancaster bar. Tomorrow you won't be able to. Along with other non-food pubs, when the doors close tonight, it's not certain when they'll reopen. Is it two weeks? Is it three weeks? Is it three months? Um, the information is uh, passed so poorly. We've just not understood where, where we stand really. And of course, our staff are asking us questions. Uh, we can't answer them. 
For Lauren behind the bar, it means real worry about finances and the future. On the 80%, I was in the red already. Um, do you know what I mean? I was like having to pay out more just for bills and things like that than what I was bringing in. So it, it's going to make that even worse, like with it going down to the two thirds. There were late night negotiations between regional and national government. Some local leaders said they'd won a good deal. Others say their hands have been forced. Unless you agree to go to tier three and thereby accept the deal, if you don't, you won't receive any monies and you won't receive that support. That felt like being bullied, but mailed to me. Ten reps, so five on each side. Though gyms in Liverpool have closed, in Lancashire, under the same alert level, they're able to stay open. Providing that we're sticking to the, the rules and the, you know, the sanitising and the one-way systems, I don't see why they shouldn't be open. I think it's a bit um, strange, really. Um, if it's saving one area, surely it must be saving the other area. So 12 push press, 6 on either side. The gym owner believes local leaders lobbied for her industry to keep going. They provided us that lifeline now to, to keep trying to drive our business forward. If, they, if it had gone the other way and gyms had closed, I think we'd have really struggled. Downing Street insists that local leaders have made their own decisions about which businesses to close, but the mayor of Liverpool was critical. People will look at this and say, are we seriously being told that the gyms in, in, in Lancashire and the people who use them are acting more safely than the people who use gyms in Liverpool? And so we've ended up with a tier 3A structure and a tier 3B structure. So, you know, it's really confusing. Nice work, sir. Well done. High energy here. So it reach for those toes. Back at the Lancaster gym, but others say their blood pressure's rising with all the changes and the feeling that what's allowed in one place may be forbidden a short distance away. Although some may not like it, the people of Lancashire and the Liverpool city region go into the weekend knowing that their areas are on the highest alert level. Not so here in Greater Manchester, still in limbo. And whilst uh, local leaders and national government can't agree on how to take this area forwards, the people who live and work here must wait for resolution. Judith, thank you. New stricter coronavirus measures have come into effect in Northern Ireland this evening. Many pubs and restaurants are closing their doors with only takeaway services allowed for the next four weeks. Hair and beauty salons also have had to shut. Business leaders have warned that a financial support scheme set up by the devolved government is inadequate. And from midnight, London is going into Tier 2, the high alert level of restrictions. Tonight, London has enjoyed socialising with friends before the new rules prevent people from different households meeting up in any indoor setting. People from areas of the UK with high levels of coronavirus, including Tier 2 in England, are now banned from entering Wales. Some parts of Wales were already closed to visitors, but from tonight, no one from hotspot areas outside Wales is allowed to cross the border. Our Wales correspondent Hal Griffith reports. A divide defined by roads and rivers, the Welsh border meanders north to south for 160 miles. Now it's a new front in the fight against the virus. Anyone living outside of Wales in a Covid hotspot is barred unless they're travelling for work, education or to provide care. I haven't even been on the bus, I'm too frightened to go on the bus. <laughs> for sisters Julie, Sue and Janet, it's welcome. They are wary of visitors to Monmouth, a town which last week recorded zero cases of Covid. Because they're not doing the rules in the where they are coming from and you they look shouldn't. on the telly and they're all mingling and... Well, we, we, we don't want it, do we? <laughs> well, we've been trying to protect ourselves right the way through lockdown as much as we can. And we, like you say, we've been lucky here. The Police Federation says the new rules are unenforceable. Thanks now. Bye. But extra patrols have been promised with this warning. If you do travel to Wales, we will engage with you. We will encourage you to return to your home area. And um, anybody who is, is deliberately flouting the law uh, will be issued with um, fixed penalty tickets. The border ban is largely to protect rural communities. Most of Wales is already closed to visitors because of local lockdowns. And next week, the whole nation could be told to stay at home as part of even tougher restrictions. A decision on a so-called firebreak will be announced on Monday. The situation is so serious 
that we have no option but to look at new and different ways to keep Wales and to keep you safe. Doing nothing is not an option. But doing what exactly and for how long? Further down the border in Chepstow, Mandy says she's willing to close if it means saving Christmas trade. It's not going to go away, but we need to control it. I'm hoping that the two week, three week is going to see it, all the numbers go down, everyone's going to settle down, and we just have to learn to live with it. There's no doubt the tide has turned. We are heading towards harder times, which may test everyone's limits. Howard Griffith, BBC News, Caldicott. Our Deputy Political Editor Vicky Young joins me now from Westminster and there's a lot of pressure on Greater Manchester to, to accept these new Tier 3 rules but you can see the, the tension now between government and, and local leaders. Yeah, that's right. It's not just different proposals in different countries in the United Kingdom. Within England now, you have this regional approach. It's not like the lockdown of the spring where it was brutal, but it was a simple message, stay at home. Now, of course, it's evolving, it's tailored uh, to each particular area. And, of course, that means a more complicated picture. It also means it's become more fractious. If you involve more people in the decision-making, first of all, it takes longer. Now, that is causing, I think, some consternation. There are a lot of businesses in many parts of England who are sitting and wondering whether they can even really be open uh, next week or uh, the week after. Uh, I think too there are risks on both sides here. The government's being accused of not stumping up enough cash to help people who might lose their livelihoods and there are some local leaders being accused by the government of really delaying decisions that they think are essential. And I think there's a possible another problem here. You've got local councillors, you've got Tory MPs, you've got Labour mayors, lots of them questioning whether the measures are really necessary and the danger is it undermines that health message and in the end people might just question those rules themselves and not adhere to them as closely. Vicky Young, thank you.